Well, good morning. I'm uh, pleased to welcome Secretary Rumsfeld and uh, General Myers, members of his staff here at the Crawford, to, to discuss some important issues, uh, issues that relate to the security of the American people. Uh, we spent time talking about missile defense, uh, the, uh, the progress that our nation is making after our withdrawal from the ABM Treaty has been uh, is impressive that uh, the Secretary and uh, his uh, planners are uh, thinking through how best to, uh, to de spend uh, the R&D money so that we can better protect ourselves and our friends and allies from the uh, true threats of the 21st century. And I appreciate the briefing, Mr. Secretary. I thought it was uh, illuminating. The American people need to know that the Pentagon is uh, forward-thinking, is aggressive in its uh, approach to uh, developing uh, systems uh, that will uh, more likely be able to respond to you know, what we're going to face. Uh, secondly, we talked about uh, contingency plans. One of the jobs of the military is to constantly be thinking about how to respond to a con an issue should it arise. And I appreciate so very much uh, the Secretary's uh, thinking on that. And thirdly, we talked about transformation issues, how best to make the military uh, conform to the, to the threats we face other than missile defense. I mean, what weapon systems, uh, what strategy should be employed, how do we make our services uh, more joint in nature? The Secretary rightly pointed out that in the past, uh, the service chiefs would come with uh, their particular wish list, but there wasn't much coordination as to whether or not a weapon system in the Navy could would work jointly with the with the Army, for example. And uh, Secretary Rumsfeld and uh, and his team have done a really good job of beginning to shape the philosophy, a new philosophy in the in the Pentagon. And uh, it was right here in the governor's house. We call this the governor's house, by the way. It's where uh, he first briefed me on transformation plans nearly a year ago, and he's back um, to bring me up to date on on uh, the progress that the Pentagon is making, and, and we're making good progress. The American people need to know that our Secretary of Defense is willing to think differently about how to structure our military uh, and is also willing to work with the uh, Joint Staff, people in the Pentagon to get them to think differently. And it's not an easy task, but he's, he can be a stubborn guy. And, uh, but he's got a vision that is positive for the country. Mr. Secretary, would you like to say a few words and we might Thank answer you. a question? I want to learn how you answer questions. They tell me you're quite good at it. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. President. We, uh, uh, we were here last year about this time and had an opportunity to um, discuss with you and get some guidance as to the period ahead. We've benefited from that and we're back to give you a, a good report and, uh, and to gain additional guidance for the period coming forward. We're of course working on the budget bill for the 2004 to 2009 period even though the 2003 uh, budget is still pending before the Congress. So we have to get that process going and I felt that we had a very good chance today to uh, discuss missile defense and, and the pro important programs that we have going forward for transformation. Uh, the, the cold hard fact is that the United States lives in a very different security environment today in this 21st century than we did uh, prior to September 11th. Uh, we have the task in the Department of Defense of seeing that we're able to provide the kind of defense capabilities and deterrence that will enable our country to contribute to peace and stability and to protect the American people. And that means we've got to shift this department and, and see that we have the kinds of capabilities that fit for the challenges and the threats that exist in the 21st century. It's a big job, but we've got a good team of people and we're working hard on it and we thank you for your support. You're probably wondering why the Secretary is wearing a suit. Would you like to explain why you're wearing a suit? I don't have any sport clothes. <laughs> He's going to Fort Hood to talk to our troops, uh, to thank them for their service. And Secretary, I appreciate it. Yes. Sir, as you've studied today the military capabilities of the United States and looking ahead to future threats, one thing that has to factor in is the growing number of U.S. allies 
Russia, Germany, Bahrain, now Canada, who say that if you go to war with Saddam, you're going to go alone. <laughs> does, a, does the American military have the capability to prosecute this war well, alone? Well, if you're asking, are you asking about Iraq? That when the subject didn't come up in this meeting, and uh, and and, but having said that, uh, we we take all threats seriously, and uh, we will continue to consult with our friends and allies. I know there's this kind of intense speculation that seems to be going on, a kind of a, I don't know how you would describe it. It's, it's kind of a churning frenzy. Frenzy is how the secretary would describe it. <laughs> uh, but the subject didn't come up. Uh, we will obviously um, continue to consult with our friends and allies. You, your question makes certain assumptions that uh, may or may not be true. But we will continue to talk with our with the people concerned about a peace, uh, and how to secure the peace, and uh, and those are needed consultation. Not only will we consult with friends and allies, we'll consult with members of Congress. Yeah, Terry. Could, could I just add a comment there, Mr. Please. President? I think it's worth noting uh, on that particular subject that the President of the United States and the Secretary of State and our country has put together a coalition that stretches across the entire globe that is addressing the problem of the global war on terrorism. It is 80 or 90 countries. There are 37 or 38 down in Tampa, Florida with liaison officers. We have at any given time 18, 20, a couple of a dozen of countries involved in Afghanistan participating. The, the coalition that is working on the global war on terrorism that the President and the Secretary have put together is broad, it's deep, it's impressive, and it is in fact what is helping the the forward progress that we're achieving, the traction we're getting with respect to, to dealing with the uh, terrible, terribly difficult problem of, of global terrorist networks. So many of those are now saying that they won't take the war against terror into Iraq. What do you do about that? The, the president has asked, not asked them to. And, sir, if, if I could follow up. Uh, Please General, do. General Franks today. We're in, that, we're in that giving spirit here. Thank you, sir. General Franks today. He has said that he's drawing up war plans to provide you with credible options. Now, should the American people conclude from that that you're reaching some critical point, that a decision is in, imminent? First of all, in the midst of the frenzy, I want you to note that General Franks is not here. General Franks is doing his job, and one of the jobs that... Uh, uh, that the Secretary of Defense has tasked to members of what uh, of, the, of his general staff is to prepare for all contingencies, whether it be in the particular country that you seem to be riveted on, or any other country for that matter. I mean, we face a the world is not stable. The world changes. There are uh, this terrorist network is global in nature, and they may strike anywhere. And therefore, we have got to be prepared to use our military and all the other assets at our disposal in a way to keep the peace. So General Franks is doing what the Secretary has asked. Would you, would you like to comment on that? I would. Uh, as the President indicated, uh, one of the things we discussed here today was the contingency planning guidance that he signed. I then meet with all of the combatant commanders for every area of responsibility across the globe. I do it on a regular basis. We go over all the conceivable contingencies that could occur. So General Franks, as well as every other combatant commander, I met, I think, within the last 30 days with at least three of them on various types of contingency plans in totally different parts of the world. That's my job. That's their job, is to see that we have the ability to protect the American people and our deal effectively on behalf of our friends and our allies and our deployed forces. So it, it is their task to work with me and ultimately with the President uh, as, as the chain of command goes from the, com the Commander-in-Chief, the President of the United States, to me, to the combatant commanders. And they're doing exactly what I've asked them to do and what the President's asked me to do. Heidi Bloomberg. Now that you're out of the ABM Treaty, can you talk a little bit about what type of testing you'd like to do on missile defense? What kind of testing we'll see soon? Sure, we're doing it all the time. We're, we're testing a layered program which involves uh, terminal phase, mid-course, as well as boost phase. Uh, it is a, a program that will become layered. It will, it will start out as a test bed and then evolve uh, over time. 
Uh, we've had some very good successes with, with both short-range missiles as well as longer-range missiles uh, intercepting them. And uh, I feel very good about the program. General uh, Ron Kadish is doing a superb job for the country. When do you expect there will be the kind of uh, missile defense shield that you'd like to see? You see, that's not knowable. And first of all, the, sh the word shield we don't use. The, the, the program that we're designed, I thought you said shield. <laughs> Oh, you didn't, excuse me, the, the winds... You thought shield. Yeah, I thought shield. Uh, we think of it as a capability that would be broad and be able to deal with relatively limited numbers of ballistic missiles and also shorter range, medium and shorter range missiles. And uh, the shorter range defenses are more advanced. In terms of how long it would take, it's something that really is not knowable because you're in the research, development, and testing phase. And as that continues to succeed and be to work out, we then will put things in place and they will evolve over a period of time. Yeah, I think the other thing that you should note if, is that the secretary is and his team are, is, um, uh, are briefing our friends and allies about progress we're making. That's one of the things I said when we withdrew from the ABM tree, that we would consult with our friends and allies. And we are. And I appreciate those consultations. I think it's very important for people to see what is possible as we, uh, uh, as we, as we uh, make the world more secure through our research and development. Yeah. President Abu Nidal, can we have your reaction to uh, reports of his death? Uh, well, <laughs> first of all, um, no terrorist can hide forever. Uh, secondly, I, it's, it's, I found it interesting that they said he committed suicide with four bullet heads, uh, four bullet wounds to the head, and so I'm not exactly sure how he died. We, we just have to wait and make sure, in fact, he did die. But it, uh, the point is, is that when the world puts their mind to fighting terror, we can rout out these terrorists. And some of them will uh, be able to hide longer than others, and some of them will be able to survive longer than others. But this country will continue to lead the coalition that the Secretary of uh, Defense talked about to hunt them down one by one. And that's a positive development. Adam, don't worry about the suit here on the ranch. The Secretary Ward, I know. Yeah, you look good. I brought your clothes. Well, that's good of you. Um, considering how much discussion has been going on recently about uh, Saddam, do you feel a need to get out there and make a case for toppling him? And if so, do you feel a need to do it before Election Day? Well, I, Adam, what I need to do is to uh, continue to, as we call it, consult with people who share our interests to make the world a safer place. And I will do so. Um, the American people know my position, and, and that is, is that, uh, that uh, regime change is in the interests of the world. How we achieve that is a matter of uh, a consultation and, and uh, deliberative deliberation, which I, I do, I'm a deliberately first. I say in my speeches, which you fortunately don't have to cover, that I'm a patient man. And when I say I'm a patient man, I mean I'm a patient man. And that we will look at all options and we will consider uh, uh, all technologies available to us and diplomacy and intelligence. But one thing is for certain is that this administration agrees that Saddam Hussein is a threat. And uh, he will be, you know, that's, that's, that's a part of our thinking and it hadn't changed. Nothing he has done has convinced me, I'm confident the Secretary of Defense, that he is a the kind of fellow that is willing to forego weapons of mass destruction, is willing to be a peaceful neighbor, that is, uh, uh, will honor the people, uh, uh, the Iraqi people of all, of all, uh, all stripes, will, values human life. I mean, it's just, uh, he hadn't, he hadn't convinced me, and uh, nor has he convinced my administration. Listen, thank you all for coming out on a windy, hot day. Fine looking boots, Martha. I expect to see a barrel riding here at the Crawford. Uh... Waiting for the invitation. Yes, good. Thank you all very much. See you tomorrow on the plane. Thank you. You bet. Thanks, Terry.